Hey guys, it's a proud cat lover, and today I'm making a video because I've had a lot of requests lately about people wanting to see my insects. Um, they have been reorganized recently because back in May, I volunteered at a nature center, so there are no name labels in any of the um, boxes. There's just numbers because I had come up with this piece of paper that had, um, there's a piece of paper for every box and it had the order of the insects and then under the order or the class or whatever you want to call it, under the order were the names of the insects that were in that order by number. So if you looked at nine under these ones here, which I can't remember, if let's say you looked at nine under Lepidoptera, then you would see whichever insect nine was, it would have the name. So that's what I did with that so it was a little bit more interactive with kids and it was a lot easier to read because when the pin, um, when the ID labels are under the insect, half the time it's really hard to be able to read the whole thing. So I figured by doing this it will be a lot easier. So in the first box, I've got my dragonflies and my true bugs and my cicadas. So I'll show those to you. I'm not going to open them just because I really don't want to smell uh, <laughs> the moth crystals. But I will show them to you. I guess I might open them just because this is kind of making them look blue. The cover is. There we go. So I'll just show them to you like this. I did notice that one of my insects antennas in one of the big boxes is broken. I don't know if that was from when I was transporting the stuff or if it happened when I stuck it in there. I don't know. But um. Yeah, I really like true bugs. I'll kind of get close up on some of these ones. These are my favorite true bugs. They're called harlequin bugs. They're really neat. This one's just a one with the spread wings and you can see how there's kind of a metallic purple there. And then we have this one like the blood sucking cone nose. This one's really neat. But we have different ones and I have a few insects that I have not pinned yet that are in a container, my makeshift kill jar and so those I probably need to get pinned soon but here is some of the little leaf hoppers and plant hoppers and this here is an aphid next to a normal sized aphid so you can see the size difference there and then these are those um, cicadas and the name has left me but um, they're the ones that every 13 years they come up so those are the true bugs Okay, so this box, and I will say real quick, I have not done these in any specific order. I just did my favorite insects in the boxes this year, including that one over there. So this has beetles, wasps, flies, uh, praying mantises, stick insects, and the uh, lacewing family, which is this one down here that I don't remember the name of. Um, but we will start up here with some of my beetles that are really neat. I'm not going to go into too much detail because I do not want this video to be a gajillion minutes long, but I just wanted to show you guys the insects because a lot of people had been asking for an update. So beetles I do really enjoy now that I've been collecting for a long time. Butterflies and moths of course will always hold a special place in my heart. They're the thing that I want to pursue the most when it comes to entomology researching and stuff when it comes to that. I want to go into something that involves moths and butterflies. But I do really enjoy collecting beetles and wasps. They're probably my other favorite uh, groups. The light reflecting is just not working here. Because I have some flies that are really small and you really don't get to see them very well because of the stupid light. But this here is that Dobson fly, a female that I had in one of my videos in the past that I was keeping as a pet as long as I could. If I angle it like this, you can kind of see the insects, so I'll do that. You can kind of see them a little better. I'd have to say out of the flies, my favorite one would be this soldier fly here, because it looks just like a bee, and it has maintained its color so well, it's like a really pretty lime yellow green color. Come over here. We've got owl flies, fish flies, um, mantis flies. I was just trying to remember this one here, which is my prized possession aside from the Dobson fly. And then there's also 
Let's see, I said owl flies, fish, oh yeah, and the uh, ant lions. <laughs> owl flies, fish flies, ant lions, mantis flies, and the dobson fly. And then there's the other two that are over here. And then of course we got a lace wing. We've got a green lace wing and then we have a brown lace wing over here. My phone is just not wanting to focus. And then over here we have a male and female stick insect. This one here being the female, the male has these two appendages on the end that he uses to uh, clasp onto the female. And then here we have the male and, actually, yeah, we've got a male and female Carolina Mantis. So this one here is the female being that she has short wings that she cannot fly with because her body is just too heavy. And then the male over here has fully developed wings. So I'd have to say out of all of the wasps, my favorite, of course, is going to be this big girl here, but when it comes to smaller wasps, I'd have to say one of my favorite ones is like really cute is this little guy here. I know it's kind of weird to say cute, but that one's cute, and then this one here has a really cute head, number 53, right there, and then number 54 is pretty cute as well. But, um, and then my favorite ant would have to be this one. I'm pretty sure it's a harvester ant queen because it has wings and it's so large. Because that's the only thing I can figure that that is. And of course my favorite beetle would have to be this guy. Cottonwood borer. But I also have a few tiger beetles I really love. Because I put all the tiger beetles together so that they could all be in the same area. These ones of course being my favorites. But I really love this green one as well. Which I think the green one is the six spotted tiger beetle. So anyway that is the first of two boxes. I'm not going to worry about showing you guys all of this because there's just too many insects and I've got a whole bunch of alcohol vials. It's just going to take too long, but I will show you guys the next box and then we'll be done. This box, of course, is my favorite. <laughs> this has all my moths and butterflies that are my favorite ones in here. All the moths are on this side. As you can see, there's a clear line that goes down between all the moths and then all the butterflies are on this side. So we'll start up here. I put mainly small ones up at the top. And of course these guys I know more about than any other insect, so most of them I know the names of. But just because I do not want this to be a really long video, I'm not going to really talk very much about um, name-wise. If you guys do have any questions, you can just note, like, point out what time in the video, and then I can look at the video and tell you the insects in the shot if you have questions. I will of course point out any that are uncommon or rare to find in Kansas. Of course the Gulf Fritillary being one of the more uncommon ones here. And then one of my favorites that I have is the red spotted purple that's right there. And then I have a morning cloak that's right here that's really pretty. This is a Regal Fritillary is what this one here is called. And apparently in Kansas they haven't really been very popular or not very popular, I should say, very populated. Um, they only can be found in certain places, which is seemingly happening to a lot of insects. Here's one of my underwings that's really pretty. If you can see it. I'll put my hand in front of my phone so that it won't reflect as bad. But I put all of the underwings in the same area here, and then all the sphinx moths I put in the same general area, and then of course with the silk moths they're all in their own spot, and the tiger moths are all here. But, um, there's a few insects, of course, monarchs, for some reason, just have not been doing good for a long time. And I've planted milkweed like five years ago, and I've had caterpillars on it one time. So I was hoping this year I'd get some. I saw one monarch, and I'm not very hopeful of finding any caterpillars, because they just don't seem to be doing very good this year. But um, the Regal Fritillary is so pretty. It's really similar to the Gulf Fritillary. Um, all Fritillaries I'm aware of um, have uh, shiny metallic silver spots on their wings. Cause Even this one here is called a spangled fritillary and then there is actually let's see because this little guy here I don't think has any spots on his hind wings and this is also a fritillary so maybe it's just the bigger ones I'm not sure but um, when it comes to favorite butterfly that would be like super hard to choose 
I'd have to say my favorite in here is probably the goatweed butterflies, which are these two here. If it's not the goatweed, then it's going to be the gulf fritillary. Or over here we have the titan sphinx moth. Only because of how uncommon this is to find in Kansas is why it's a favorite. And of course these guys I love, but yeah, they're all pretty awesome. It's kind of hard to pick a favorite. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching and have a good rest of your day.